Hi, this is Tyson. I'm an Information Services Librarian at the Wellesley Free Library, and this is our class on keeping your computer safe. We're going to look at what threats uh, there are and how to protect yourself. So what are the threats? Well, uh, malicious software is out there. It's uh, called malware for malicious software. Uh, you can be the victim of a phishing scam. That's where they're trying to uh, get you to give them personal information or uh, trying to get you to give them money, uh, making it seem like an urgent thing. Uh, your accounts can be hacked into, uh, most often your, by, through your email. Uh, malware, we just talked about, is uh, malicious software that uh, can infect your computer. Uh, your computer files can be corrupted, or your computer can be held for ransom. You don't want any of these things to happen. Uh, there are different types of malware. Malware is software that's malicious. Uh, spyware is software that transmits data covertly onto your hard drive. Uh, a virus is software that replicates itself uh, by modifying other computer programs. Uh, adware is software that automatically displays or downloads advertising material. Uh, Rootkit is software that enables an unauthorized user to gain control of your computer system without being detected. Ransomware is malware that uh, blocks access to your computer unless a ransom is paid. A Trojan horse is malware that is often disguised as something that looks legitimate, like a Word file. Uh, a remote access Trojan is malware program that gives the intruder administrative uh, control over your computer. A worm is uh, malware that self-replicates, but not just infects your computer, but can infect entire networks and servers as well. And a keylogger is a malware that's used to record the keystrokes that you make on your keyboard uh, with the idea that they're going to be able to get passwords and other sensitive information uh, from that. So what are the risks if your computer is infected? Really, honestly, there's not that much risk. You are going to get infected with stuff. It's just not going to be malicious. It's not going to be malware. It's just going to be stuff like adware and tracking software, and stuff like that. So most of the security breaches that you're going to face are going to be harmless. Uh, they might slow down your computer a little bit, and later on we'll talk about how to get rid of some of that stuff. Uh, your email can become a spamming tool, sending out messages on behalf of someone else. The files on your computer can be corrupted, including your system files. So again, defense is trying to back up some of that stuff. That's important. Uh, your computer can become a uh, zombie and launch denial of service attacks uh, against other servers and websites. And your credit card information can be stolen, uh, leading to credit card fraud. Uh, those are the risks if you're infected is, again, not that much, really. Uh, so how do you protect yourself? The number one thing, use common sense. When you're using email, if you're downloading, you're using attachments, stop and think a minute. You know, how do I know uh, who I'm uh, corresponding with? Am I downloading or opening attachments from a source that I know and that uh, I don't think is going to be uh, malicious? Don't be led astray by emails that use fraudulent hyperlinks because of unfamiliar websites. Uh, they're going to send you an email. It's going to have a link in it. Never click on the links in an email. Uh, it's always uh, 
uh, it's a way that they can you know, lead you to a fake website uh, if they're phishing uh, or if they're trying to get you to give them your password or log in to change something on your account. Um, uh, just uh, don't don't be led astray. Uh, beware of emails with attachments. Only open the attachments from known senders. Avoid filling out forms contained with an email. Often, uh, email, that type of stuff, is they're fishing for personal information. If you need to fill out something, if they're asking you for uh, a password change or, or uh, update your account, uh, uh, there are other ways to do that. Uh, always log on directly to the official website for the business that's identified in the email. So, you know, they say you're your bank or they say you're a YouTuber or, or eBay or something and they need you to uh, uh, update your information. Uh, don't do it through the email. Go directly to the website and then log in from there and change stuff from there. Um, beware if you're asked to act quickly. That's a tip that it's fraudulent. Uh, if it's an emergency, oh, I need help, or it's a scam, you know, uh, we're gonna, if they use threats, oh, we're gonna shut down your account if you don't update it right away, blah, blah, blah. That stuff is fraudulent. Um, just don't let their sense of urgency uh, make you act uh, uh, in the moment. I know that can be tough. That's why we want to use common sense. Uh, create a strong password. The best passwords use numbers and letters, avoiding any real words. Problem with that is they're hard to remember. So you got to write it down. That's one of the big myths about passwords. Never write it down. No, writing it down is a good idea. Write down the password. Have it uh, somewhere where you keep passwords. Um, the other myth is that changing your password all the time is a good idea. Not really. Hackers only need to get your password once. Uh, if they're in, they're in. Uh, pick a good password, one that you can remember. And, and use it and uh, don't worry about uh, changing it all the time. Uh, I shouldn't worry a lot about passwords. It's, you know, kind of just a little bit. I would say that uh, there's a difference between a password that you're doing for the, the place to just identify you as the user and a password that you're using for security, like for a bank thing. Uh, obviously, a security one you're going to have be more complicated and uh, something that they're just identifying you as the user that it might be uh, okay to have it be less complicated. Um, I would suggest using titles of books, songs, ice cream flavors, whatever you can can remember. Uh, and you know, mix it up enough. Uh, uh, people often use three for E. Uh, you can be creative with how you use the numbers. Uh, how do you protect your computer? You want to use a cloud tool, uh, Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive. These are all things that will store a certain amount of your files for free. Uh, it's on their computer, so uh, you don't have to worry about uh, losing it if your computer gets infected. Uh, the problem with those, of course, is that the company that owns them, Microsoft or Google or Dropbox, uh, they uh, will scan what you put on there. They'll kind of have an idea of what's, what's up there, so. Um, it's not as private, but uh, it is safer. Uh, install antivirus software. You must, must, must have antivirus software on your computer. 
if you're using Windows 10, the Windows security system in Windows Defender is good enough. Um, it's what I use at home, it works fine. Uh, but Norton, McAfee, Avast, Kaspersky, Malwarebytes, anything you want to use uh, for antivirus software is fine as long as you're using one. The important thing here is to only use one. If you've got two of them installed, they're going to conflict with each other. The other deal with antivirus software is that it needs to be updated all the time. It needs to get new definitions so that it can defend you properly. So you're constantly going to be updating it, or hopefully this is going to be doing it automatically, but uh, that's the thing with antivirus. Uh, you want to update your operating system. You want to use uh, update and security if you're using Windows 10 from the settings screen and update uh, Windows 10. Uh, I know it's a pain. It, it takes time to do all these updates, but they're really important to do. Uh, those hospitals got, got hit with the rans cry, wanna cry ransomware. Uh, wouldn't have gotten it if they had done their Windows updates. So it really does help your system run better, uh, and it, it's a good thing to do. Uh, we talked about updating the antivirus definitions. You want to do that. It should do it automatically, but you should do it every once in a while anyway. Uh, you want to run a scan. You can't just leave it. Antivirus is going to try and stop stuff, but there's stuff mostly harmless that's going to get through. So that stuff you can uh, get by running scans. So every once in a while, take the time, you know, to run the antivirus, have it do a scan, uh, and try and clean up your computer. It's good to use a cleaner and to have an antivirus tool around in case you do get something. Uh, the cleaner will help your computer to keep stay running fast by getting rid of a lot of the junk that builds up over time from just using the computer. Stuff like temporary files and cookies and stuff like that. Um, CCleaner is a good one. There are others. Um, I also would tell you to download an antivirus tool uh, to have in case you do catch a virus. Uh, Antivirus tools are a software that you use after you catch something to remove the infected files or quarantine the files. Malwarebytes is a good one. They also have an antivirus software, but the free one is just a removal tool. It's, it's fine to, to use. I hope that's helped you, and uh, see you in the next video.